Hi, this is Solomon. Hey, Solomon. We'll get started in about five minutes. All right. Hey, Alexis, are you on? Hi, Chris, I can see you. Okay, perfect. I'm just, I see Ben, I see Camille. I'm just trying to get people logged in here. Are any of the Brian's on Grant or um, Cantrell? Okay. Okay, got you, Cantrell. You're chopping up a little bit, but uh, I got you. All right, we'll get started in a minute. Is uh, Brian Grant, John Bull, or Ken Owens on? I don't see them. Go ping him really quick, but we'll get started in a minute. All right, uh, let's let's get started. We have quorum with six out of nine folks attending. Um, I'll kick it off to you, uh, Alexis. <clears throat> hey everybody, thanks Chris. So I'm um, just gonna try and crack through the slides again. Um, so going to the agenda slide, uh, we're mostly reviewing some votes here and talking about some working group stuff. Um, uh, on slide six, 
uh, in case you missed it. Uh, Dan and Chris and the uh, CNCF staff have produced an annual report, which is essentially a, a shiny pictorial artifact with nice stats in it about um, Cloud Native Computing Foundation that is a good thing to share with uh, people who might have heard that you're involved in the CNCF but don't quite know what it, what it does. Um, go look at that. Uh, at the same time, also the website is being updated. Go check that out. If you have feedback on the website, please send it to Dan, Chris, and D. D. Kumar, who is now um, owner of all the marketing for CNCF. Um, number slide number seven. Uh, we have now got our first graduated product project, which is also the first project to join the CNCF uh, the, you know, March of last year, Kubernetes, which is fantastic. Congratulations, unanimous vote. And I believe that Prometheus is next up for uh, the graduation vote. Is that correct, Chris? Uh, sorry, I missed that last sentence of yours. Confirming that, that you're expecting the next graduation vote to be... Correct, Prome uh, Prometheus will be up next. Uh, I'll queue that up probably uh, next, next week, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to slide number eight, and I would like us to have a little bit of discussion around this slide, please. Um, so we have now run a vote because uh, Chris is very keen, uh, as, I, as was I, to get a quick response on the changes to the inception tier. Um, and there was some discussion about this in pull requests uh, and on the list. And there was also some discussion at the governing board meeting yesterday and I think that although I'm very happy that we have a document that has been voted through, I feel that we still have a little bit of unfinished business to tidy this document up. And I want to talk about that because I believe there are still some misconceptions out there. So um, first of all, uh, people are still fuzzy about what is the purpose of the sandbox and why it is called sandbox. And I've heard a lot of different things about this, including that uh, sandbox, the name is negative um, and that, you know, serious projects would not want to be in something called sandbox. I have to say, I find this very, 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 very surprising and weird, but and I don't think there was any malicious intent when the TOC uh, really converged very quickly on the name sandbox du during our call last time. Um, for me, it means a, an area where a range of different early stage projects can exist. Um, we've had demands for collaboration venues from early stage projects that are just not ready for incubation, however serious they may be in the long run. We've also got um, a Kubernetes incubator, which has very similar conceptual framework around it, which essentially is shutting down and we were hoping with Brian to have the CNCF sandbox be a place where Kubernetes incubated projects could live. These could, these could have been invented yesterday and literally just have had their GitHub repo created. Um, the people building them might have a, uh, a very um, well-resourced and, and very serious intent to be successful, but the projects are still just immature. And we believe that other CNCF projects, uh, such as Prometheus, Envoy, uh, et cetera, May, want, may wish to have experimental or incubated uh, components as well. And the CNCF sandbox is supposed to be a catch-all for all of these things and therefore serves a number of purposes. Um, we also want, were worried that uh, people would get confused uh, as they did with inception about whether there was a difference between the inception and incubation stage. Some concerns were raised, which I think were valid that very early projects were coming in at inception and then marketing as if they were incubated or graduated. And we've tried to say some words about that in the uh, document. Um, you know, the projects themselves may wish to market themselves. Just if they want to have CNCF support, uh, the CNCF is not going to make uh, claims that they're production ready ahead of time, it's pretty straightforwardly. And it's going to reserve the most marketing budget for the more mature projects. Um, on the point of marketing, um, several people yesterday uh, did not like the fact that this draft logo has a spade and is in a sand pit. I agree that that is a little bit unclassy. I would love to see uh, that go, but I do think that 
saying that you're in the cloud native sandbox should be a good thing and not seen as somehow that the project is amateurish. Um, in terms of the language in the document, I think the pull requests are very good. I think we still have a few more things that we need to say. I think we need to make it very clear that our belief is that these projects are proper projects, they're just early. Um, and we may need to say a little bit about the purpose of the sandbox as an incubation area for other projects as well as for things that are early stage and independent. Um, also, I think there was a concern, which I understand, around project sprawl. You know, will the sandbox be a place where there are many projects that are somehow unworthy? And will we maintain a high quality bar for new projects? And I think the solution there is just to be very clear that the incubation bar is pretty high. The sandbox projects are there to get into incubation when they are ready and not before. And the, um, you know, the projects that do not succeed in the sandbox will be pruned out uh, pretty, pretty uh, unsparingly. So I think those things need to be stated more clearly. Otherwise, we will continue to have some confusion Although I believe that the sandbox as is has already moved us forward from the inception stage, which is kind of mini incubation. So with those things in mind, I would like to ask people if they have any comments on that, any major burning questions, any violent objections. Does anybody want to hurl themselves in front of the train at this point? Because now is the time. I, I'm worried that people will bottle up their concerns and we'll, we'll hear them in three months time. No strong concerns. I'm wondering if the name is, does the name have any like cultural implications that we may not understand or like, um, is that where it could potentially like that feedback might be coming from a place where, you know, of that kind of area? Do you think, or do you think it's just a, a, a knit? I'd speak with the person who I, we're not going to name because it would be unfair to name them, but who, who specific, I pointed out that for example, um, I pointed out another open source project that has a sandbox concept for uh, initial immature components. And um, these were described as experimental. And if, you know, the comment was, well, if it's experimental and it can't be serious. And you know, I just, I think experimental scientists who work at universities and do you know, CERN or, or NASA would probably disagree with that statement. I don't think experimental connotes a lack of seriousness at all. Um, but I do think that, yeah, you've got this kind of elision of concepts between early stage, experimental, and sandbox as a word, which applies, you know, a separate, uh, segregated area. And I think that may have, you know, raised a few hackles, which wasn't intended at all. Yeah. I wonder if people just Im imply that also with the logo involved, it, it can be, you know, a, a child sandbox where people play. I wonder if that's, that's where some of it. I too agree that the logo isn't quite right. Sorry, uh, folks who created the logo. So I suppose the name is stuck now. I wonder if lab is, it might convey that there's like it's experimental but serious because labs are serious and expensive. <laughs> I like labs. I didn't want so to just be the person who started Newton. Like I don't, I don't want to be the guy that just come in and start like let's rename this, but just as an open idea there. I think sandbox just carries over from the Apache Foundation because that's what they call it. But I, I think labs definitely sounds more sophisticated than sandbox. I'll, I'll throw myself into this once more, one more time, which is that um, I believe from I believe that the um, intent is a little different than the Apache sandbox, and because it's different, the reuse of the name is confusing. But I'll, I'll also, again, say like two, two things come to mind with the word sandbox, and one of them is children, and the other is cats. And I don't really think either of those is quite what we intend. All good names are taken, unfortunately. Uh, I, I actually prefer labs as well, but it's also different from the Apache labs, because I don't imagine these would be as short uh, of experiments as what seems to be implied there. Labs is good. <clears throat> so I like Sandbox. Um, the Labs is fine. It, it does imply kind of a more advanced kind of thinking as opposed to earlier thinking. Um, and there's, I mean, there is, 
there is actually an important difference. Um, and we are trying to capture work that is actually potentially more immature. Um, and that's not merely work that is more experimental or work that is thought leading, but work that is that is actually just not that mature. And if we want to include those, we, we need to have a term that, that I think accurately has those connotations. I personally like sandbox because of its mixed connotations. Um, and I find it somewhat, I'd be curious to know what projects think about it. Um, I'm, I find it a little bit suspicious if projects bridle at that tells me that they want to abuse, or I'd be concerned that that would be an indicator that they are trying to abuse uh, becoming a CNC project. So um, it, it, I think labs is, labs is fine too, although labs to me is not perfect either. Anyone else? Surely we have people with opinions today. There's 40 participants. But let me let me re respond to Brian's comment a little bit um, and just an area of sensitivity, um, especially for larger companies where groups want to put some effort into something that really is a, uh, a serious effort. Um, I think the sandbox probably does them an injustice with regards to explaining to um, folks in management about like the fact that they're doing something serious. It could be experimental, but serious. And so again, I'll, I'll take another another uh, another moment to say sandbox just doesn't sound serious enough. And honestly, if we didn't already use the term incubation would be pretty good for projects that are immature and we want to help them grow. Um, I don't know if we want to continue with that metaphor, but um, yeah, I, I just think there, I'm not sure we'll find an ideal term. I think we should move ahead with the concept and figure out the naming. Um, Unfortunately, I think the nomenclature really matters. The nomenclature is a very, in that, I mean, because we already had the concept to a degree with inception and that was, it was the nomenclature that was causing confusion. It wasn't just the nomenclature. I mean, we could actually, you know, put a bunch of these new uh, rules in place and with the inception name, and I think that would be a big improvement already. But if we can settle on the name, that's clearly better. Just as a point of process, Chris, um, could we? Could we do a new round on name this week? I, I know it's a pain in the neck, but I believe that um, people deserve to be heard. And there was a lot of Q and A about different names being suggested last week. I don't want to go down that road, but um, you know, several people have um, said that there are some, shall we say, cultural connotations around sandbox, um, and we should respect that. I'm personally, for the record, completely happy with sandbox. I think it's an awesome name. But um, I, you know, don't want to feel like people have been sort of culturally antagonized, um, especially cat owners. Um, but, you know, in all seriousness, I'd be totally happy with labs. I don't think we need to get wrapped around the axle in this, but I do think we should resolve the name before we tell people this is a done deal. And I don't think everybody's on this call, so we probably need to put it onto the TOC list. And I'm willing to have a, a numerical vote and just say, by majority, we'll, we'll go with what, what the majority votes for. We could even open it up to members of the list. I don't, I don't really care. Just as long as we have a limited number of names and people feel like they have a say and we respect the result. And to be clear, I think Labs is also fine. It might be a better name. I think if, if there's consensus that that's a better name, we should change the name. But I think we, we just, we don't want a name that I think conveys more than what we're trying to convey. And I think that nomenclature really does matter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, there's, there's two different groups of people who are worried about the naming. And just to be clear, one is people for whom uh, the sandbox name itself has the cultural, has some cultural connotation. And two, um, a, pe a smaller group of people for whom the very concept that there is a category in which projects might be deemed experimental um, is problematic. And I just don't see how we can satisfy the need for 
um, bringing experimental projects into CNCF alongside other early projects um, without running, running this risk. I mean, the alternative is to say to people, well, then you should just come in at incubation level. But, but as we saw last year, some projects just aren't ready for that because they don't have enough users. And we're trying to set a high quality bar on incubation that's tied to use, not to just to the opinions of a few people. So, um, you know, we might end up losing a couple of projects here, but that, that's, that would be too bad. Is it, is it worth circulating labs back to those people who have the concerns, Alexis, to see if, if labs alleviate right. some of the experimental concerns? I'm actually in real time doing that with one or two people. Oh, okay, um, good, okay. Uh, that is why I made the point that um, whilst uh, I think, for example, calling it labs would address Bob Wise's point, um, calling it labs and having any stage one, early stage bucket that connotes the idea that some projects may be experimental will upset people who don't see their projects as experiments, but actually as, I don't know, serious business endeavors or something. And I'm just, you know, I think we're kind of reaching the limits of who we can make happy concurrently. Um, and uh, I, I would like to propose that we, you know, bring this particular phase of the dialogue to an end pretty soon. Um, does anyone else want to make a serious suggestion for any other name now? Uh, other than labs or um, sandbox, and then Aaron, I think Aaron had one in the chat uh, workshop shop is or generator. I mean, I like labs. I'm just kind of googling synonyms for that. The other thing is to try and take a name without intent off of it and just say it's a stage one project. Like some like number the stages, and you're in a certain stage. Being in a certain stage means why is it, there's no connotation to that. It's uh, you're at a specific stage with us. So I'm really worried about that because I think we'll go back to the problem we have with Inception there, where um, the natural tendency of early stage projects, especially sometimes these have people who've uh, quit their jobs to bet their life, bet the farm, bet the house on, on a startup that is tied to this early stage project. And you know, they will go and do marketing and the rest of the community and the end users will not understand the difference between stages one, two, and three. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. I, heard. I like workshop actually. Um, I think that's a that's got the right academic connotations as well. Okay. So I think that. All right. Well, I think three three candidate names is frankly enough. So let's call it <laughs> Sandbox and Workshop. Chris, cool. do you think we can run some kind of open vote that is that brings in you know? Maybe TOC contributors who've signed up already and TOC people with votes. Sure. Or something that seems a bit, you know, that is opening it up to everybody on these three names and pick the one with the most votes. I, I, sorry, so Alexis, I know we, we just want to close off names, but can I just throw out a couple? So I think actually the reason, the reason I like Workshop is because you are making things as opposed to discovering things. Um, and we're, we're not in the, we're not really discovering things, we're actually making artifacts. Um, in that vein, um, and I'm sure this will rub a lot of people the wrong way, but prototype would be another possibility um, that that implies something that is in the process of being built, but is not yet completed. Um, that might be something, I don't know if that's going to make people more or less upset, but that's another one to throw out there. Okay. okay. I will throw a vote out to the TOC and TOC contributors uh, on this. And then uh, my suggestion is uh, the next meeting, uh, based on those results, uh, the TOC come to a conclusion and then we move forward. Yeah. Is anyone unhappy with that plan? Because I think we need to do this pretty quickly. And I think it's, it's fair, it's open, it's reasonable. Sounds good. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Now, I just want to make one final point, which is you're not off the hook from putting pull requests into correct the document if you see specific things in there that need fixing. So do please continue to do that. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Now we move on to slide number nine, TOC elections. This, this uh, process is ridiculously complicated. So maybe someone else can explain it. <laughs> Sure, uh, I'll take a quick stab on this one. Um, so <clears throat> last meeting, uh, you know, I kind of went over that the TOC, uh, the two TOCs 
seats are up for uh, election again. We started the nomination process, and um, last time I checked, we have eight uh, nominees. I believe the nomination process closes today, which is great. Uh, the one thing I left out that I was um, duly informed by our uh, legal counsel is um, we have this qualification period that I originally thought only applied to the bootstrapping of the TOC, but applies for um, you know every seat essentially here. So uh, for two weeks, uh, the TOC has the option to reach out and uh, talk to the potential TOC uh, nominees. And then there is a vote of the TOC and the governing board to qualify these things. And each qualified, each nominee needs at least 50% of that vote to be officially qualified and pass. And then we do a formal vote um, after that. So it's basically uh, a vetting process that was originally put in the charter to assume that uh, the TOC uh, and the board would be happy with um, the folks that get nominated, if that makes sense. Um, but uh, hopefully that makes sense for folks. But I've updated the schedule uh, to reflect the qualification period, uh, which um, will start uh, essentially tomorrow. And uh, my goal is to hopefully announce the uh, new TOC slots uh, early April, uh, in April 6. Does anyone have any questions here? All right, uh, thank you. Uh, let's, let's move on, Alexis. Thank you, Chris. So we're now on slide number 10. Um, we have a number of uh, proposals uh, coming over the line. Uh, we're gonna start a vote on NATS very soon. So if you're a TOC contributor and you haven't had a look at NATS yet, please go have a look. Um, as the sponsor, I am happy with NATS as a project for CNCF incubation. Uh, we use it ourselves. It's been in use for some time. It's not such a well-known project for a number of reasons, but it is a good lightweight messaging implementation. Uh, OPA and Spiffy, as you know, are very oriented towards uh, specifications as well as implementations. Uh, do please reach out to the uh, sponsors and to the owners of those projects. Uh, and encourage them to interact with the community around moving forward here. Um, I think that this whole, uh, you know, sandbox workshop labs thing has been a bit dislocating for them. And I think that it's good if you show them your support, please. Okay, I'm gonna move on to slide number 11 now, the interactive landscape. Um, Dan, do you wanna tell us about this? I think you're on the call, Dan. I can see your face in the slides. Hi, I think you can hear me now. So uh, uh, I think, yeah, folks are familiar with this document and the positives for the, the existing landscape, what we now call the static landscape, is that it's ubiquitous. Everybody talks about it. Uh, people use it a lot and send it around. Um, it has uh, really that shows the power of collaborative editing it has over 2,000 stars. Uh, on the negative side, uh, it's been described as the hellscape. It makes adopting cloud native seem much harder than it should be. You have a tyranny of choice. The small logos are getting hard to read. And it's uh, it's too difficult to learn more about each product or project. So the CNCF team has been working on this for um, several weeks, and we have two responses to it. One is a much deeper deep dive, and I, I really do encourage you now, um, it's, you know, this is, I'll make this a link, landscape.cncf.io. It just went live a few minutes ago, and um, it lets you uh, filter and sort and kind of understand the space um, much more easily than you could before. And then uh, going to the next slide, 12, this is the cloud native trail map. And I will say this is just the first iteration of it. I, I do think we're going to improve it and, and change it over time. But this is um, a way of trying to understand the uh, 14 CNCF graduated and incubating projects and uh, how they fit together, how, which ones you might choose, um, and a, a path you might take through them. And so um, I, I think uh, marketing documents like this are very challenging for a, a big group like CNCF that nobody is, is ever completely happy with them. Um, but I, I am hoping that these are going to have a, a pretty positive impact. And um, to the degree that you can see edits and, and changes you'd like to make, I'd really encourage you to, to reach out to me um, and uh, suggest them. 
And then specifically on the interactive landscape, it's uh, please file pull requests. We're, we're really eager to fix the things that are there. That's it. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions about the landscape or uh, any of the other stuff around here, like the trailhead, the trail map, sorry? Yeah, you forgot yeah. to discuss the trail map, Dan, by the way. Yeah, I had a quick question. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's Quentin here. Um, how do we decide which kind of logos and things get onto and don't get onto those things? It seems... So the trail map is pretty easy because it's just CNC, it's become a CNCF incubating or a graduated project. For the landscape, we have a real specific set of rules that we put together um, over time. And um, I am pasting those into the Zoom window. Uh, by no means am I claiming that these are a perfect recipe and you could basically file pull requests on this as well if you want to suggest different rules. But the simplest one is uh, 250 stars, GitHub stars on your project. And I, I, I really do appreciate how arbitrary that is, um, but it, it, it's just as a basic level of are other people interested in it or not. Um, but th there is a whole process on there also about choosing logos and such. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Dan, in terms of the particular text, um, I mean, in particular, the, the test as a distributed database is um, overselling it a tad. Um, the, um, how do you want suggestions on the language? Because I do think on, on that particular one, we need to tone it down. Yeah. On that one, just an email to me would be ideal. And uh, I mean, I, my only request would be if you could just say what you think the perfect sentence is, because I, I do appreciate that this needs iteration and, and is not there yet. Yeah, I mean, I think you're I think we're close. I just, I, there are, that's the only thing I saw in there that, that might raise some hackles. So um, I'll, I'll send you some suggested wording. Please. Thanks very much, uh, Dan. So um, we'll come back to the this landscape in a minute when we talk about the working groups. But I forgot to mention something about the projects, which is that under our new rules, since we are expecting Spiffy and OPA to come in at the entry stage. Uh, which will be named either workshop or labs or sandbox in the future, then um, under the new rules, they will need two TOC sponsors. So I think it would be extremely good if uh, people in the TOC could step forward and be co-sponsors of Spiffy and OPA. Um, if you want to think about that and say so to me and Chris afterwards, that would be great. But please, please do uh, give that serious consideration because um, you will be needed. I'm happy to co-sponsor OPA. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to co-sponsor Spiffy. Thank you. Could you, uh, Chris, could you facilitate an intro to the, I, I, people already know each yep. other. <clears throat> we'll do. <laughs> don't worry about it. Thanks. Okay, so um, on the project review backlog, uh, I'm not sure if we, Chris, I think this is really a slide for you because this is about the next set of reviews. Uh, all I'm going to say here is, uh, oh, I should have updated this, sorry about that. Um, so uh, Prometheus is up next for graduation. Um, so look forward, I'll probably kick off the vote uh, next week um, on that. Uh, and then after that, uh, Fluent D has a Proposal to also graduate, uh, which I would like the TOC and wider community to make comments um, uh, on that one uh, before we formally put it forward to a vote. Right. Okay. Okay, so now I'm jumping ahead to slide number 16, CNCF WG updates. Um, and in particular, actually going to talk about the cloud native definition. Um, can we have a person who was involved in that say what the status is. I've forgotten who was the primary owner of writing down a definition. Uh, yeah, Camille, Justin and I were working on that. I haven't had any time to spend on it in the past two weeks. Um, so we need to get back together and uh, do another iteration. Camille wanted to retain some of the 
uh, language or concepts from the current definition in the new right. definition. Okay, thank you. Um, going to go on to slide 17, uh, talk about the reference architecture, and I'll also talk about the landscape at this point. So um, I think that the, from, from my point of view, uh, the landscape uh, is a good marketing tool, but has of course become um, ridiculously complicated with so many logos added for whatever reason. And that kind of reduces its value as an opinionated educational tool. I think the reference architecture group around Ken has an opportunity to offer a set of opinions which could produce, you know, simplified pictures, stacks, suggestions, diagrams, really whatever you think is most useful, um, which is both concrete and meaningful and can be used in a um, you know, wider context. So if you believe that the landscape uh, needs to be simpler um, or the trail uh, needs to be shorter, uh, please join Ken's effort in the reference architecture group. So Ken, over to you. Yeah, thanks Alex. Like this. So, um, you know, on, on this, we, we talked about this two weeks ago. I've had a couple of, of, of people sign up and I'm going to schedule a kickoff call for um, next week. Um, so um, if you're interested, please, um, between now and next uh, Tuesday, try to sign up. Okay, anyone? Got any questions about that or about the slide pictures on slide 17 or 18 for Ken? Okay, great. Um, we didn't cover the networking and storage working group. Just on the storage front, um, I am trying to figure out with um, some of the other folks in the TOC how we can kind of now accelerate storage now that we've started to add some projects. So if you're in the storage working group and you want to uh, keep up the momentum, please could you send me and Chris an email about um, you know, how we can talk to you about moving things forward more quickly uh, and we'll put you in touch with various folks who've volunteered to help. Okay. And on the, on the network front, Alexis, I can give a quick update if you want. Please, that would be great actually, thank you. Sure. So um, on the networking front, we've had a couple of fast starts um, since the beginning of the year and trying to get the working group um, moving forward again. Um, we sort of um, identified three areas we wanted to kind of um, look at, um, like sort of services that are needed for, um, for networking. Um, and maybe you might consider like firewall and low balancing, not a networking service, but we're sort of using that as a general bucket to kind of capture some of these um, value added type of services that are needed um, in a cloud native reference uh, design. Um, we've been, you know, working with CNI team to kind of understand what part of those should we just do a pull request against CNI and then whether things that are kind of outside of CNI scope that we need to either work with the CNI community to add to the scope, or we need to come back to the CNCF with, you know, um, projects that may um, help complete sort of the networking um, aspects. Some of the things on the landscape, for instance, are, are being looked at within the group. Um, we had Microsoft um, present uh, last week and they gave a good um, kind of view of, in terms of like how customers are trying to implement um, containers in Azure at least. Um, here are the types of, of network connectivity issues that we're running into that aren't covered by CNI. And so we have a small list of things that we're looking at um, and that we're publishing on the networking work group page. I haven't updated it yet, but I will um, hopefully today or tomorrow. Um, so that's sort of one of the, the main areas we're focusing on right now. The second piece is around IPv6 and sort of the need or the expectation that some um, organizations have around IPv6 and as of you, you know some of you guys know that um, a lot of the um, um, you know a lot of the larger enterprises have um, needs for IPv6 and a lot of the services out there that are cloud native do not support IPv6 um, completely or need a dual stack type of implementation and so 
we thought it might make sense to have the networking work group come up with a um, kind of a statement, not not so much a reference architecture, but maybe more of some statements around what are some of the needs in a cloud native model for IPv6 and what type of capabilities we want to have in place around IPv6 and cloud native deployments. So if you're wanting to, to join those discussions, uh, feel free to, to join that working group. It's, um, we meet every couple of weeks on, um, on Tuesday. Thanks very much, Ken. Somebody was talking about IPv6 on the Kubernetes dev list today. There was a blog posted about it that might amuse you. <laughs> Good. Um, all right, so thanks for the working group updates. And I will just add that I know it's a bit slow, but uh, I think we're trying to come up with some slightly more formal um, frameworks around what working groups do, what their scope is, how empowered they are. I think that will still take a bit of time to figure out. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, events, slide 19. Uh, Dan or Dee, do you want to tell us about what's on here? Or Taylor? Um, I, I will. So the, the key thing is just that uh, this week, the prices go up for KubeCon Copenhagen. And so if you have been thinking about going the uh, schedule is live. I really encourage you to take a look. I think it's going to be an amazing event. We're um, expecting it to be almost as large or, or larger than Austin. And uh, then Shanghai is our first ever event in China in November. And uh, Seattle will be our biggest event ever. And if your company is interested, the sponsorship information is at that link for all three events. Thanks. Thank you very much. And um, we're not planning a TOC face to face or anything at um, the EU conference. No, it's not on the schedule, but you you could do it if you wanted to. Yeah, I mean, we could have it. I think we might just have TOC drinks and then we could all, you know, commiserate. All right. Um, I think upcoming meetings, the next one is two weeks from today. Uh, if you've got any burning agenda items, please send them to me and Chris. We'll post them on the TOC list. Um, I think we are also hoping to, you know, finally finalize the, the initial tier. Okay, anyone else got any other business for today? Nope. Okay, thanks very much and see you next time. Cool. Take Thank care. You. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.